Now that you've installed Abacus, it's time to understand how it all fits together. In this video, we'll explore the Abacus CA interface and workflow from the theory that guides its design to how you navigate each module. By the end, you'll know exactly how the Abacus environment is structured and how each step flows into the next for a complete simulation. If you're interested in this video, let's sit back and relax as we get started with this video. So welcome to this video. Before you watch this video, you probably should have watched the previous video, which is number three in this series, where I showed you how to install Abacus so that you can begin to use it and follow with the content of this video. In this video, we're going to be looking at this Abacus CAE environment and the workflow. And I've provided a few slides where I speak about the theory first before we go into demonstrating this in Abacus. So let's first look at introduction to the Abacus CAE and the workflow. And the first thing I want to look at is the contents and the components and the workflow in terms of a typical FA structure. This is not just unique to Abacus, it applies to every FA server. And the first thing we have to think about when you come to an FA environment is the processor, the preprocessor. So this is an environment where you preprocess the content before you start sending it to the simulation to run. So the output from the preprocessor usually is a keyword file. This is some form of a text file that contains a set of instructions that you're going to use to drive the FE simulation. And from that keyword file, which in the case of Habakkuk is called an input file, a start input file. Then you go into the simulation engine. So this is where the numerical implementation that we we'll speak about in the first video in the series lives. So the whole set of numerical implementation that drive what you're trying to do, that drive the whole final element pre process, that drive the solution of partial differential equations, that's at the simulation engine. And from the simulation engine, after crunching of the numbers, what you get out is an output database file and there are different names that you can call this within abacus it's called the star.odb file so this is the output database file so it's basically again a file that stores all the information from the numerical solutions that you've undertaken within the fe solver and then from there you pass that information into a post processor so that post processor is uh, again another platform that looks at this output database file re format and remaster it in a way that is visually appealing you know to the user in the form of what we typically will call a counter plot so this is a workflow for every fe solver from a post processor producing an app a keyword input file to the simulation engine an output file generated and a post processor that looks at that content and then from there you could then have a parametric or this loop which is basically an iterative loop where maybe you improve the mesh where you change the material where you change the boundary condition but this sequence continues to be what you do as part of the finite element solution there may be instances where you have to introduce some interfacing modules so these are not necessarily within the central framework so this may be some python scripting that you will introduce a user defined material file you know something external to this basic backbone that you need to bring in to sort of modify modulate improve adapt optimize the solution so that to make your solution effective but i wanted to show you how everything fits in within the final element framework. Yeah, so the preprocessor program within the FEM scheme consists sets of instructions or activities or programs that run to create inputs required for executing the next step in the finite element analysis. So the post-processor is basically a set of instructions. You could do that manually by coding up what you want or use a platform like Abacus CAE to post, to pre-process the model, the solution. The essence of the preprocessor stage is essentially to create this set of inputs that you need to throw into the simulation engine to drive the process. So this set of inputs or commands are stored in a file. Within Abacus, this is called a keyword file. Other applications have got different names for it. This aspect of the program is the one most users interact with most of the time. So when you say you're working within ANSYS, essentially this preprocessor environment, that's what you're dealing, dealing with. In our case, when we're saying a lot of what we're going to be doing within this masterclass is essentially playing with this preprocessor environment because we want to com command or instruct the simulation engine on what it needs to do for us. Just to give an example of other preprocessor software environments, of course, we know the Abacus CA is the one that we're dealing with, but within ANSYS, you've got the, Abac uh, the workbench, if you are used to that. In console, you've also got the desktop GUI, 
in Alta, you've got the hyper mesh environment in LS Diner, which I used to work with extensively in, in, in the past. You've got the pre-prost. So these are all pre-processor environments that you can work with. And a lot of times when we're working with tools, this is really what we're engaging with. And then the next thing here is the set of activities that happen at this pre-processor stage are the things that constitute the pillars of the final element framework. And for example, our next video will be looking at virtual domain and creation of parts. So that's one pre-processor task. So other videos will be looking at discretization, which is meshing. We've got the video videos on material model, which in Abacus is called property. There's association of model to components, which is called the assembly module. Again, videos that will be addressing this. We've got a boundary condition principle of framework or set of models. Mod videos, again, in Abacus, we call these loads and boundary conditions. And then we've got a contact mechanics principle or module, which is called interaction module within Abacus preprocessor environment. We've got parametric studies, again, aspects still in line with our framework that we're talking about, which is called the optimization module. And then in terms of creating the file and submitting the file and generating your solution, we've got the job submit. So at the core of the preprocessor are all the different modules that define the workflow within the FEA framework, which defines what we talked about in the first video as computational mechanics pathway or workflow. And Abacus has been able to implement this within the preprocessor file, making it very effective for us to use. And we're going to be just illustrating and exploring these different aspects within um, this illustration of what is happening within the Abacus CAE environment. What exactly is the Abacus CAE? What is it? The CAE is an abbreviation for a complete analysis environment a complete analysis environment, so which is Abacus CAE. So the idea here is that within the CAE environment, you can do everything you want to do with the analysis, not just the pre-processor, but also the post-processor task. It's also both a pre-processor and a post-processor environment. So interestingly, Abacus have been able to combine that. But if you look into the, the, the design of the framework, actually, you've got the Abacus CA environment. However, when you want to post-process, there is also a module called the Abacus Viewer that you need to import and bring in into this process, CA environment so that you can look at the results as well. But we're not going to talk about the post-processor because we've got a set of videos later on looking at that. But what I really want you to get to understand here is that the Abacus analysis environment is a comprehensive environment that carries out both the pre-processor task and the post-processor task and that's what we are going to be showing in this video so if we then look at what the structure looks like so basically this is what the structure looks like so um and i've taken this from the documentation file for this so and i will show you in a moment what this looks like but basically there is the title bar at the top there are many bars that you see and there's a two bar that is right there the context of whatever you're trying to do is here, the context bar. And then we've got a model tree where you also have the results tree. So you've got a model tree, you've got a results tree. So there's a set of two bars here, the canvas environment where you also include the viewports, which is like a window that showcases what is happening at that time, any point in time. There's this environment which is called the prompt area. So depending on what you're trying to do, you get some prompts that may tell you it's now time to click done, click escape. So sort of a prompt area is right here. And then there are two things that occur right in this environment. So you've got a message area, which gives you periodic updates of what's happening as you you know, create the model and run your simulation. But there's also a command interface. So for example, what you see here is a command line, a kernel command interface. So what this actually does is to, you know, you can do some basic commanding of what's happening. So for example, you're, if you're using Python scripting, this is sort of where you would have to do the command of what's going on in the Python scripting. So we're now going to go into Abacus to show how this actually works. Okay, so here is my computer. And if you want to open, you, by this stage, you would have installed the Abacus CAE. So I'll go to this and then go to all. It depends on whatever computer you're using. So but you find out that this is one of the folders that are installed before, you know, and within there, you've got the Abacus CAE environment and documentation. If you click on the documentation, it gives you more instructions as to what you want to do. But I'll just want to go on to CAE. So it comes up with this window, which is sort of where it's trying to load up the model 
working in the background trying to generate all the information you need and please during your simulation always leave this window open um, because it makes connection between the Abacus simulation engine and the processor environment so you do want these two things to be active at the same time okay so when you open your code this is what you will see so you've got Abacus here environment so there are two only options in this student version so you've got an electromagnetic model and you've got the Abacus standard explicit model most of our discussion will be really on the standard and explicit model for this uh, master class so we haven't got any discussion around electromagnetic module there are some modules in the fuller version of Abacus but for this student version this is all that we have so I'll click on so just to look at what you find here so again like we said at the top end you've got the menu bar um, and you've got the toolbar so sort of the essential toolbars that you've got in the context menu they're all around here and then the model tree will be here and next to it is the result so when you output your model you've got the results environment here and then at the base here you've got the message file so it's a new model has been created the model one has been created so it gives you regular information of what's happening and then the next place is where you do you know some basic commands so i could say a is equal to two b is equal to three and then c is equal to a times two times b so now if, if you go back to the model tree around here so remember how we said that there are different modules that you have so the same thing applies so the modules that we've got here is the module for virtual domain so you've got the property module so when you select that a new thing comes up you can then also go to the assembly module again a new um, set of tools context you know uh, its commands appear here and then you've got the step for analysis step so the interaction module is a contact mechanics module the load module is more for boundary conditions and applying load on the model this is a meshing interface for optimization is for parametric studies the job module is where you submit the job you create the input file submit the job you've got the visualization module which is a post-processing module and also sometimes you need to sketch as part of creating your virtual module virtual domain so this is the sketching module so you can navigate through these modules directly um, and every module you select will have a different will have what you got here also the same arrangement appears on the left hand side and i tend to work quite a lot with these ends so for example you've got a model one that is created here so again you've got parts for virtual domain materials for calibrating the model for creating sections for assembly module step analysis of the file interaction modules and boundary conditions and loading are all here so you can do sketches submitting job and so on so this is sort of the framework that we have consistently so it really depends on whatever workflow you want to work with in your analysis so if you look here at the end so you got file so you can create a new model here right away you can open some existing modules you can import some existing modules or some parts um, you can run scripts so again all these are things that we're going to go with learn a bit more during analysis so within the model you can also manage the uh, you know it's like a library of what's happening in the module so if we click here so it tells you okay currently this is what model we have we can create a new model from here copy modules edit the keyword file that you generate for a given model and many other things so abacus works on this principle a lot where you know you've got all these pop-up windows can that can help you monitor just one aspect of what's happening in the model and then you've got the views so different kind of views you get in the model so pan view rotate zooming and graphics odb display for visualization module so you also have an interface for the result so what we have most of the time here could also be recreated as menu items there so it really depends on you what you want to do with your simulation and the workflow is determined by how you want your workflow to go with so let's just look at a simple case i want to start a model so this is my model one has been created and i want to create a second model i could say create another model so it comes up with this window that said okay fine this is a name i probably maybe i could say this is just a steel cube this is all i want 
and the model type I want is a path, a standard and explicit path. It depends. So this is obviously the two options, electromagnetic and standard and explicit. I want the standard and explicit. You can provide some description, a description where if you click on here, you can say, so this is a simple model for creating a simple cube box. So that gives us a bit of information. It's always a good idea to have some of these ideas. So again, sometimes you may have to provide it some physical constraints. This is like an overarching parameter that drives everything you do. So if there are some parameters that sort of drive drive everything you do in the model for example what the absolute temperature is the stuff uh, you know stuff and boseman constant universal against constant you specify them here at this early stage in the model what that does is that you know, throughout the analysis throughout the computational work within the framework of solving the fe solver it will use all these parameters but most users don't really have to bother because some of these numbers are standard and they already had coded within the solution if you need to you lose them there is something called a restart analysis, which we could deal with later on here, but we're not dealing with that. We're going to talk about submodeling later on and, and many other things. Sometimes you may have to copy constraints, connect all the interactions from other models, but we'll not look at this bit. They are more for advanced uses. And then you click OK. So again, you can see our new cubic model has been created. Uh, there's always the default model one, which comes as soon as you launch Abacus. And if we then open that up, you could see again, it inherits all the different modules that we talked about before. So in our next video, we're going to show how to create parts for, for the module. At the moment, it's just for us to understand the interface. So if you again go back to the parts here, you can start at this stage to begin to create. And everything you're doing, it's appearing on that one module. So in this case, it's still cube everything we do will be locked within that if we go to the other module as well everything will also be within that same window as well so that's really the structure of abacus in terms of what we're going to use so let's just say if i double click on parts so again it comes with creating parts we'll deal with this in our next video but what i want you to see here is there is a command information a, a message that comes here say fill out the create part dialog box so that again is something you need to be aware of all the time so you can cancel that and then it cancels the operation or what you're trying to do as we go through this master class we'll be exploring some of these things that appear here the only thing i wanted to add here is that in terms of this viewport we have one viewport that is always there you can create some other viewport by click here so we've got some other viewport created if you click it again you've got three viewports then we can decide to cascade the viewports so you can see these are like little windows that is driving what you're doing the canvas is in that environment so you've got viewport one viewport two and viewport three depending on what you want to do you can tile them up horizontally so if you want to show the three different models in this window you can tile them horizontally you can also tile them vertically and you'll see that sometimes you want to connect the things you're showing on this video in a linked manner so you can click here so you link all three of them together so that whatever is showing in one will be replicated so for example if you're looking at deformation and deformation will be the same as your track what's happening on three different models on the same time step in our next video we're going to look at how to create a path so thank you for your interest in this video and i'll see you in the next bye bye <music>